We have uh, one more award in this category, and I, I'm going to call upon the president of the International Council of <laughs> Press and Broadcasting, who is, of course, uh, the founder of Hood Hood Books. She's also a trustee of the Next Century Foundation, Dalia Salam Rashani, to present the next award. I must say, I'm sorry you're seeing me for the second time, but this time I'm going to be much more brief. It is a real pleasure and honor for me to be presenting this award tonight. Our next winner is a seasoned war correspondent. He has reported from over 70 countries in the world, obviously. From El Salvador to Afghanistan, to Somalia, Chechnya, Rwanda. He started as a trainee at the BBC in 1984. By 1995, he became the Middle East correspondent. This was followed by several awards, including the outstanding coverage of the assassination of Israel's Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. But five years later, in 2000, his career took a new direction, where he became and co-presented BBC One's breakfast show. I was too young. <laughs> anyway, however, in 2003, he went back to what he's best at. We might say once a war correspondent, always a war correspondent. In 2005, he became Middle East editor. More recently, last year in February 2011, our winner was the last Western journalist who interviewed Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. <coughs> More recently, naturally, he has been focusing his reports on Syria. When we were paying tribute earlier on to fallen journalists, I thought of our winner. He is no stranger to losing a colleague who was very dear to him, whose passing away has affected him for many years. He said in his book, War Stories, if life was like a fin, I would have run up to him. I could have comforted him. But I decided I could not save him and that I had to save myself. The ending was not happy. Life is not a fin. This award is presented for his courage and his determination over his coverage of the Middle East. As Middle East editor of the BBC, he has been both inspiring and exceptional. And the winner is... The shooting happened a couple of hundred yards behind me. It's about the most dangerous stretch of road in Sarajevo, and they chose the most dangerous time of day to go down. A lot of anger in this country. There's also a lot of hope that their problems can be solved. If they're not... So many civilians were killed here is that you in Hamas, in the Qassam Brigades, fired at the Israelis from within the civilian population. They need bigger numbers on the streets and they need more help from inside the regime. And up to now, they haven't had enough of either to get the result they want. There are large areas of this country which you don't control anymore. There are even people in towns quite near here who are part of this rising, this rebellion. What are you going to do about all of that? <laughs> Now, what is the question? And the winner is Jeremy Bowen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Lord Stone, Dahlia, William, everybody. Thank you so much for this. Uh, wasn't expecting it. Um, you know, the, being a journalist is great in some ways and terrible in others. Uh, I mean, you've seen yourself on that little video there that you can start off with quite a lot of hair <laughs> of a certain dark color, and then in no time at all you don't have any hair, and it's a different color. And even the hair that was on your face is gone too. Uh, so. 
That's one of the downsides. There are other downsides. Uh, but the, the great thing about being a, a correspondent is that, being a foreign correspondent, is that uh, it's, you have the enormous privilege of going to places where things which everybody in the world is looking at on that day are happening. And it's my good luck as the Middle East editor at the BBC to be one of the people who tell a lot of people around the world about what's going on. And that's a great privilege, which you know, I try to take responsibly because, of course, there are still a few people around the world who believe what we say. And we have to respect that because we do try to give the best, we can, the, the best snapshot we can of the day. Um, myself and all the other colleagues who I have, uh, who work not just in the Middle East, but you know, around the world. And what I like about these awards, and it's, uh, for me it's a great privilege to, to, uh, and a thrill to uh, have been given this in the company of people who actually are working in their own countries under enormous stresses and strains at times in a way that myself as a foreigner going into places doesn't get. Sure, we get arrested occasionally. What's the, what's the worst thing that can happen probably? is that you can probably get kicked out unless you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, like some of our colleagues who we saw in that, that moving tribute early on. Uh, and that's where I come to the downsides of the job, really. The downsides of the job is, is that, is that uh, in this world these days, there are plenty of people of power who don't want the truth to get out and are quite happy when the men with guns who they employ uh, do in and kill journalists. I mean, sometimes it happens because you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. But sadly, these things happen uh, increasingly, I'd say, because people get targeted. Because these days, because of the 24-7 news cycle around the world, uh, people want to interfere with it and interfere with that process of free speech and freedom and trying to get uh, the truth out. One of the things which for me as a reporter has been a big um, thrill. Actually, it's been quite, it's been great at times over the last year and a bit in the region, has been the fact of seeing people who are absolutely intoxicated by the fact that they are able, sometimes for the first time in their lives, to stand up and talk in a free way publicly and not care if they do it to a television camera because it doesn't matter. No one's going to come to arrest them. Now, sadly, there's, there are quite a few places where they can't quite do that yet. Uh, but still aspire to do it. So that's good, and that makes up for the downsides. The loss of hair, the fact you don't get to see your family, uh, if you still have, if you're lucky enough to have a family after a long time in doing this kind of job. Uh, but thanks very much, and also I have to say, I, I'm so excited to have an olive tree, and I can't wait to look at the instructions and see what you have to do with it. Thank you.